Just give me a wee second to get under the flow of this. Okay, hopefully everybody can see and I have you all unmuted so you can't tell me if you can see or not. But I will, um, I'll make a wee start. Uh, so we have a few people who are completely new to, let me see, there's a little chat there, uh, Zoom. Um, and well done for joining in on your, uh, on your first webinar. Um, I'll be doing loads more of these as time goes on. So um, it's, great to, uh, it's great to see it started. So for anybody that doesn't know me, my name is Janice Tracy and I run a, a small, um, I'll call it a company, but I'm self-employed. There's just me, Janice Tracy, nutrition, and I'm a nutritional therapist, just uh, uh, newly, uh, newly qualified. Um, but I've been studying nutrition for the past four years and a nutrition and lifestyle coach um, for that uh, for that time. So this is just giving you a bit of an overview of my professional timeline, um, just to let you know that um, uh, you know where I come from and uh, sort of the sort of background I've had. Most of my life, I've worked in the public and private sector, um, and it's really only in the last four or five years that I have uh, taken an interest in um, in nutrition uh, and well-being. Uh, so this is just a wee bit more about me. So this is uh, my beloved family. Well, you can see Elvis there in the middle. He's not uh, he's not a family member, but um, part of me, I love him to bits. And uh, anytime I'm a wee bit down, put on a few Elvis tunes and uh, all, all is well in the world. So you can imagine this past week or so, he's been, uh, he's been played out. Um, so these are the things that are important to me, my family, and um, that picture of me there in the middle is uh, me walking on the road to Santiago. Um, so uh, walking long distance um, and just using that as a bit of time out is, uh, is important for me. So um, my uh, next Camino had been planned for May um, in France and Spain, so it doesn't look like as if that's going to go ahead. Um, so disappointing, but sure we have to meet this challenge uh, head on. So that's uh, that's all that bit over. So why am I doing this um, today? So as we all know, the um, this coronavirus, this pandemic, um, is um, has hit other parts of the world and is on its way um, to us. Um, probably bigger than we can imagine. Um, although, um, you know, maybe we won't get it as bad as, as some, of, some of the other countries because we'll be able to learn from, uh, for, from what they've done. But we do have to just be a wee bit um, as prepared as we, as we possibly can. Um, I'll glance down every so often here, folks, because I have a few wee notes. Um, but I just want to make sure that I can, you know, get the, get the best across to you for, um, for the time that we have. Um, so really, you know, what, what I think we can do here is we can, you know, improve our own physical response to this, uh, this virus. They say that, um, that, you know, the best defense is, is offense and um, that's, 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 what we, that's what we want to be doing. So what can we actually do in terms of nutrition and lifestyle changes? Um, and I'm not going to talk to you about hygiene and washing hands and of course, we should all be staying indoors and all of that. You know, there's there's, there's loads of information um, out there. Um, it's it's the other the other stuff around nutrition and lifestyle um, that I want to talk to you about um, today. So I do believe that we are empowered. Um, we make choices every single day, and those choices are choices that either support our body and our immune system, or there are choices that weaken our body and our immune system. Um, and it's basically that that I want to work, work through with you in the next hour or so. Um, so this is one of the top ones um, that I'll be talking about. So I'm coming here at this, I suppose, uh, some people might expect me to start coming in here and talking about vitamin C and uh, all the vitamins and minerals and everything. And definitely I'm going to get to that. But before we get to that, stress is probably one of the most, definitely not probably, the most important thing um, that we can get a handle on in terms of building up our immune system. So there's stress, sleep, 
will be the second um, thing uh, that will help to support our immune system. All of this before we get to food. Definitely stop eating the crap. Um, and I didn't make this up now. I saw this somewhere and I thought it was fantastic. So the C for the carbonated drinks, the R for refined sugars, the A for artificial foods, and the P for processed foods. So basically we want to try and cut that out as much as possible and eat more of this. Um, so anybody that has to uh, leave early, basically this is what we're going to be talking about. That's, that's my, those are my top tips in a nutshell. I'm going to go into it in a bit more detail, obviously, um, but, but that's it. So that's basically going to be the structure of this presentation um, here today. And I have prioritized them in that order. Uh, stress, sleep, nutrition, exercise, a bit of it, the right sort, and last but not least, supplements. Now, I say last but not least supplements, everybody always wants to know what magic pill can I buy? What, you know, uh, what can I take, you know, that's going to protect me, that's going to build up the immune system. And really what we've got to be doing is hammering home on the stress, the sleep, um, the nutrition from food, um, and keeping ourselves active. We're doing all that, boost that up with, with supplements. Um, and I'll talk about them anyway as we go along in that order, but not going there first, if you know what I mean. So a wee bit of, um, I suppose, a wee bit of background, a wee bit of understanding about what the immune system is. For those of you that are on here and you already know all this, I apologize, but I think that there are loads of people out there that really, whenever you're talking about the immune system, they say, what? you know, where. Um, and so I thought I'd spend a few slides just talking a wee bit about the immune system. So the immune system, just as it says here, is a complex network of cells and proteins that defends the body against infection. That doesn't tell you much about what it is really, where it is. It keeps a record of every germ, every microbe it has ever defeated so that it can recognize and destroy that microbe quickly if it enters the body again. So it has no record of this new one. So we have to keep it strong anyway because it, you know, we're, we're fighting an, an, an unknown quantity. So that's just something um, to bear in mind. This is uh, great. I mean, this is a, a technical definition that I copied and pasted from, you know, from, one, of, uh, from one of my books. Um, but it still doesn't give you a good idea of, of what the immune system is. So maybe like, where is the immune system? And it's not in any one single location. So it's not like, you know, your heart or your liver or your stomach or something that you can point, your brain that you can point to and say, that's where it is. This is the area that I'm going to be focusing on or down here is the area that I'm going to be focusing on. Basically, wherever the cells are and whether, wherever the blood goes and wherever the injury or the infection is, that's where your immune system is. And there are lots of um, uh, studies, uh, recent studies that, that suggest that about 70 to 80% of the immune system is actually in our gut. And that's because it's such quite, it's quite a big mass. It has the, 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 the tubes that go round and round and round in the gut, really. Um, it's like a, a big land mass whenever all of those pipe works are all flattened out um, that engages with the, the blood system. So, 70 to 80% of the immune system is in the gut. So remember that whenever you're, you know, you're, you're maybe talking to somebody and they're saying, oh, this, this is good for the gut, sort of that's something that can bit your sauerkraut or your probiotics, good for the gut. If you've got a healthy gut, it's likely that your immune system will be, you know, firing on all cylinders. So it's just some, something to remember. And this big cut here that we're, that we're looking at in this, um, in this finger, um, basically, um, that's where your immune system is, <laughs> you know. So if you can imagine um, your immune cells, all whenever you get a wee cut on your finger, your immune cells are all shooting through your blood, moving in and around here to kind of eat up that infection and tidy it up and clean it up and the whole wee army of, and that's, that's only for a wee cut. So you can imagine how strong our immune system has to be to fight this, this unknown invader um, coming in. So just a wee bit more on the immune system as well. And, you know, these are like your immune system will be in your white, your, it's your white blood cells, right? So these are all different types. I'm not going to go into this in, in too much detail, but it was just to kind of give you a picture 
of um, the immune system being all over, your tonsils and your thymus, your lymph nodes, your spleen, and importantly, your bone marrow. Um, you know, so your, your immune system is, is dotted all over. And with all of these cells and, you know, wee blood bits all round about, they basically need um, food, ammunition, the vitamins and the minerals that we're taking in, they, they keep it strong and active. Um, so if we're starving our immune system of um, vitamins and minerals, and if we're feeding it, you know, toxic stuff and, you know, stress and no sleep um, instead, then it's just like an army run on an empty. Hope that makes sense. Normally, if I'm doing like a workshop where you're all there and talking to me, I'm going, does that make sense? And somebody will ask a question or something, which we're not really able to do now. But you know, uh, Hopefully, question, uh, there'll be time for questions at the end. And again, I really like this V slide. Um, uh, and this, this is basically what your immune system is like. And you know, your immune cells are all in there thinking, right, what are we going to do if this thing hits? Um, you know, uh, I thought this was uh, this was quite funny. They're all working out how to how to attack it. Um, and uh, hopefully that's what all of our scientists are doing uh, as well and, and coming up with something that will a vaccine that will help the more vulnerable um, in our society. So a wee word about inflammation. Now, let's see if I can get this in here. So, um, so inflammation is a really important part of the immune system. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about it, um, but I just want you to be aware of it because towards the end of the presentation, when I'm talking about food, I'm talking about anti-inflammatory uh, foods. And it's not that inflammation in itself is a bad thing. It's just that it should be short term when we get a cut inflammatory hormones signal the immune system to send you know the white blood cells to as i said the the, uh, the area of the infection they remove the damaged tissue and they fight infection but after that that inflammation should go down what happens is whenever it's a long term um, inflammation and these uh, persistent messages are coming and the inflammation is chronic um, then it does more harm than good and you know a lot of us are walking around with more long-term inflammation and um, if we have inflammatory diseases like say for you know, example arthritis or you know stress in itself is an inflammatory condition i'm going to be talking you know a fair wee bit about stress now in a minute um and so that's why i just wanted to bring up the the whole inflammation thing so we can see where that's coming from so how can we support the immune system um, I have, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to get rid of something. Let's see. Um, so I've talked about these few things um, uh, at the start. I'll be talking about them in the middle and at the end. So basically, the, the, you know, the, this is basically the circle of support that your immune system needs. Uh, to manage stress, to put on good nutrition, um, to improve our sleep, to do some exercise and if necessary and if possible to take some good supplements to take some targeted supplements so let's start with the stress so where's the stress coming from i mean even without the coronavirus you know we're a stressed society everyday stressors are work you know finance family and just you know general health and well-being we're kind of, uh, you know, most of us are living on, on the edge of a, of, of a precipice and in a constant state of, you know, fight or flight from we get up in the morning, they were going to bed at night, we're, you know, like, uh, tense and stressed out. Um, and some of us, more than others, will maybe do some um, de-stressing activities and, you know, do some exercise and do some meditation and things like that. And actually what you'll probably find is those people who have made Things like a meditative practice, um, you know, do breathing exercise, doing the, you know, the, the yogis um, amongst you, um, will have more resilience built up um, for, um, you know, for things like this whenever it comes along. But basically, those are everyday stressors, which we've been living with anyway. Um, you know, the, the coronavirus coming along really has just, um, oh, I don't know. I was going to say quadrupled it, but 10 times more stress, if not more. Um, 
and you know the the stress is is really severe stress it's kind of like the fear you know and the anxiety the not knowing and the and the not knowing how to deal with the not knowing um and the constant negativity that um you know that we're seeing and that we're hearing you know through nobody's fault sometimes because they're trying to you know give clarity and and uh, you know give give more information but that constant bombardment of information is really putting us into it's like a, it's a state of what's called sympathetic dominance in our bodies and it's a heightened state of, of sympathetic dominance um, and whenever we're in that heightened state of sympathetic dominance our immune system is weak so we're probably started off maybe with the normal everyday stressors not really you know being very focused on our immune system and kind of just getting through getting through it um, and you know maybe if an illness hits us we you know we, we struggle a bit but you know really what what's happening now is unprecedented um, you know it's an unprecedented level of stress that we have to deal with we have to recognize that and recognize the impact of that stress on our um, on our immune system okay so if we look at then really what's happening whenever we are stressed whenever we're stressed and I apologize for the wee typo up there you can see increased heat rate it's increased heart rate um, I pinched this off, um, off, uh, off a website and didn't have time to redo it all so I just had to put it up there with the typing the type and error, but it's driving me off the walls looking at it. But anyway, uh, so increased heart rate and um, increased blood pressure. So if that wasn't bad enough, the, the impact of the stress hormones on our immune processes is that the corticosteroid suppresses the immune system. And on top of that, we have a disturbance of the digestive system. The digestive system is your gut, and 70 80% of the immune system is in your gut. So generally speaking, we have an increased risk of disease because of the impact on the um, immune system, the digestive system, and the cardiovascular system. So that's basically where you're, what, what's doing, what, what's happening whenever we're so stressed. Um, and you can see, I hope that you can see why I'm focusing so much on um, something like stress before I come in at it um, with uh, some of the, the nutrition solutions. So, what does stress actually do? Stress lowers the white blood cells, uh, the number of white blood cells that fight infection. Okay, so if we've got less of them, and if they're weaker, then they can't fight the infection. And stress is doing that. Stress, fear, and loneliness all suppress the immune system. Now, this was a 1984 study that was done uh, with students who were studying for their final year exams in university. Um, it was a great study to read, actually, um, uh, albeit the results, uh, well, I suppose the results have told us what we need to, what we need to know now. Um, and the elements of stress and the fear, but most of all, uh, loneliness with, with the students um, whenever they tested them for their exams, um, uh, during their exams and after their exams, have all suppressed their immune system uh, dramatically, dramatically. Um, and the lower that our lymphocyte levels are, the more at risk we are of viruses. So basically, it's a stress. And then on top of that, what happens whenever we're stressed out? Stressed people are making poor nutrition choices. You know, you're going for comfort foods um, and we're less likely to be eating an optimal diet. Um, I, and, and I mean, like, there's no quick fix for this. Um, the first thing we've got to do is learn how to manage the stress. We certainly can't reduce it that much um, because it's there, um, but we've got to learn how to manage it and reduce the impact of the stress. So these are and kind of like what I, what I want to do for today is, um, you know, give you some tips that you can take away. You won't be able to take away and do them all, um, but you'll pick out the ones that, that you know that are making a big impact on your life and um, that can make a bigger impact if you uh, take some action around it. So if you're a person that's feeling 
overly stressed, really, really stressed with uh, with this whole thing, and I'm sure that we all are. But but to varying degrees, you know, then you want to be picking out some of these things and saying, okay, what can I do? What can I do to minimise the impact of the stress on my body? You know, we. We want to really be staying out of what's called this sympathetic dominance, right? And that's whenever um, this whole panic and fear uh, you know, takes over our lives. Um, whenever we are fearful and whenever we are anxious, it sets off a whole pathway um, of uh, the wrong things, uh, dominance in our body. We want to get into what's called the parasympathetic um, dominant state, where we're a bit calmer and... Um, I'm going to say relaxed, and, and relaxed is, is not really what, I'm, uh, what I mean, but just a bit calmer um, about it all. Okay, so the sort of things that we're looking at is an overall daily awareness of the high level of stress that you're under. Even though you're coping with it, that physical stress is still there. Um, one of the biggest things, um, and um, anybody that knows me will probably laugh because I'm nearly always on the phone and checking things anyway, is to limit your exposure to social media. And even though I have the phone in my hand, uh, most of the time I am really trying not to scroll and have unfollowed a lot of, you know, people and organizations that are um, basically frying my head with negativity. Um, so limit your exposure to social media. Um, definitely, of course, you want to stay informed, but um, you know you only need to be informed once a day. Uh, get outside. So there's loads of research out there um, telling us that if we can get outside and get some air and get some sunlight, um, then that you know that helps to kind of lower the levels of stress in the body. Now, get outside, she says, whenever we're all supposed to be isolated and self-isolate, uh, self-isolating and social distancing and not going outside um, unless we really have to. Um, I'm pretty lucky. I live up a lane, you know, four miles away from, you know, the nearest uh, whatever else. So I can go a good couple of miles around the fields and not meet anybody and see anybody and I'll be grand. Um, but if you live in a city and, and um, you're, all you have is a wee garden, even just getting outside into the back garden, sitting at the door, getting the air about you, um, anything like that at all. Uh, you know, if there's a, a park close by, um, just depending on what uh, restrictions they, they come in for us, if at all possible, get outside. Um, hang out with positive people. So we can't go outside and hang with real people, um, face to face, uh, physical people, but your virtual people. Make sure that they're positive and that you're sending out, you know, as many positive messages as we can. You know, we are empowered. We can do, you know, we can do things. We can take action. Um, you know, one of the actions that you can take is to plan how you're going to look after your body. Plan how you're going to look after yourself. You have a personal responsibility to yourself and a duty of care to anybody else in your vicinity. You look after yourself in case you're needed to look after them. Um, and plan it out. So use what you're picking up here today to say, right, okay, what's the first step that I'm going to take? To look after myself, make sure that my immune system is strong and, you know, that I'm the healthiest person that I can be. Um, one of the big things around the, um, the reduction of the stress response in your body um, is uh, doing some breathing exercises. I'm going to talk about one just in a wee minute, but there are loads and loads and loads of very short breathing exercises that you can go through. So we'll come back to that. Um, a wee bit of yoga. So there's loads of free yoga um, on YouTube. One that I really like and used even before this was yoga by Adrienne. Um, I think it's A-D-R-I-E-N-N-E. -N -N -E. um, if you just Google her, um, she has like she has yoga for every every eventuality. No one, no one heard. She'll probably have yoga for the coronavirus. Um, but you know, she has. I remember looking it up for a guy. He was a gardener and he had a bit of a sore back. Uh, and she had yoga for gardeners. So you know, um, uh, and a lot of they're they're just nice, uh, nice, easy, gentle poses. But it will, it again, it'll help to lower the stress response. None of this is going to take the stress away. But what it's going to do is reassure your body. That, that you're safe and once your body feels safe it'll switch off that stress response 
and move you into what we call this parasympathetic response, which will allow your immune system uh, to be more active. Whenever you're in the opposite of that, your immune system is dampened down. Um, a bit of walking, again, um, I have that in there, and you know we're allowed to go out and walk at the minute. Um, I think well, most of us are here in Northern Ireland. Maeve has joined us from France, and I don't think she is allowed to go out walking. Sorry about that, Maeve. Um, but if you can um, get out walking, if if you can, and until you can't, um, you know get out walking and, and do a bit of something. Um, and just mindfulness, just being aware and mindful of um, mindful of everything, mindful of the thoughts that are in your head. Mindful of the words that um, that you speak. Uh, mindful whenever you're having your food. Um, you know, I think this this time, if we're if we're lucky enough to be able to you know spend time and have less rushing around to do, um, and and use it to make us more mindful and more grateful and more appreciative of um, of what we have. Um, again, each of these I could do a full workshop on. Um, but um, you know, come back to me at a later date, and uh, I can do. Or equally, you know, YouTube and Mr. Google is great, great, great for things like that. Or if anybody wants any tips on any of these, say for example, where they would go for for mindfulness, or they can't find the yoga by Adrienne, or some more detail on breathing exercises, just pop me a wee email whenever we're done here. Um, I'm happy to share whatever resources um, that I can. Um, and um, essential oils. If you have any essential oils at home, um, or if you have access to um, any essential oils, um, then uh, you know putting them in a wee burner. You know which ones, any of them. I have a wee um, a wee one that's just called relaxation. I got it over there at uh, North Star where I where I work from. Um, you know, or a lavender essential oil, anything that just gives you that kind of nice, uh, relaxing smell. Now, particular essential oils will work on, on different areas of the brain, but just generally something that's just nice and calming. So I've, I've had my relaxation um, essential oil burning away in the oil burner room there um, for a couple of hours just to, to keep me calm before, uh, before coming on here. And did a few wee breathing exercises as well. Um, and then the calm app. So I am a big, big fan of the Cam app. And literally just go to your app store, look for Cam, download it. It's a free app. Um, and now there is a, a paid element uh, to it if, if you want, it, which I have paid. It's something like £35 a year. And so, so worth it. But even before I, I, I took on the, the, the paid one, the free element of it has plenty to offer. Um, you know, it has a 10 minute daily cam, which is like a 10 minute guided meditation. Um, brilliant. If you were to do a pick two of those, limit your social media and do the cam app um, just to start you off. Um, absolutely amazing. You were doing 10 minutes of the guided meditation um, every morning. Um, it would really set your day off um, uh, well. Um, if you can possibly then do something in the evening and a wee breathing exercise um, at uh, say around about lunchtime, you know, then even though you're still worried and you're still stressed, it's giving your body a couple of minutes break from being in that stressed, uptight um, uh, mode, um, if you know what I mean. So I wonder am I finished with stress management? No, I'm not. So this was one of the wee breathing exercises that I often uh, go through with clients when I'm working with them on a one-to-one -one basis. So there, there's different types of breathing exercise, but this is this is a nice one because basically you're closing your eyes and visualizing the box. So this is called box breathing. Um, you're breathing in for four seconds. You hold, now it's not so much that you're holding your breath, that hold actually, I must change that word. You pause, you pause for four seconds. You breathe out for four seconds, and you pause for four seconds. And the visualization of the box as you're breathing, and the counting of the breathing actually distracts you from the thoughts that are gonna be kind of whirring in and around your brain anyway. And then all of a sudden these thoughts will come in. You know, just let them come in and fly by and get back to your box. Where were you on your box? Oh, you don't know, I'll just start. Think about a box as you can start anywhere. You know, start with a pause, start with a breathe out, start with a breathe in, wherever it's a box, four sides equal. That's it. 
You know, there are loads of other ones. One of the other ones that I um, find particularly calming, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, at night, um, is whenever you um, uh, breathe in, say for four, and breathe out for something like six or seven. So the breath out is longer than the, than the breath in. And that kind of, um, it, it not almost imbalances the brain enough to, the, um, to de-stress you. There's a physiological uh, reason why the out-breath longer than the in-breath works to de-stress you, but um, it would take too long to, to go into now. So that's a different um, breathing exercise. Again, I have a wee fact sheet on breathing exercises if anybody is interested in that, if that's one of the actions that you um, want, to, want to take forward. Better check my time. How am I doing? Oh, not too bad. Uh, right, okay. So let's see what's next. So next, I still haven't got the food and nutrition for all of those who were waiting for uh, all the all the gin on the food. Um, I apologize. It is coming, but um, you know, eating good food and being stressed out and eating healthy food and not sleeping well, it's you know, you're you're getting everything. Um, back to front. If we get the stress levels um, managed a bit, and next we get the sleeping. So if we've actually started to manage the stress a bit during the day, and we're maybe doing 10 minutes of the calm up, and you're doing a few of those wee breathing exercises at, um, uh, you know, maybe lunchtime or something, and then you're doing some sort of like a wee, um, either a meditation or a gratitude journal just for a couple of minutes at night. I mean, those minutes all add up, those de-stress minutes all add up, and that will impact on your on the on the quality of your sleep. Um, I was actually just listening to a, um, a podcast earlier today, and I was so delighted. Uh, she's a she's a fantastic nutritional therapist in um, in America, and uh, I had a very good presentation done. Stress, sleep, do, 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 whatever else. And whenever she started talking, that's what she was talking about as well. So I was, oh, yay, <laughs> I'm telling my people the right things. Um, I hope you're laughing now. Uh, anyway, um, so uh, routinely sleeping less than between six and seven hours a night. Routinely sleeping less than, than, than uh, those hours a night um, demolishes your immune system. Now, one bad night's sleep is not going to do this. This is really if it's kind of happening to you, you know, eight times out of ten, that you're not getting a great night's sleep um, and that you're sleeping less than, less than six hours a night. Your immune system is going to feel the effect of that. Insufficient sleep. And this was a shocker to me, actually, whenever I heard that. Um, and this, this came from a guy called Matthew Walker, and he has uh, written a book. Um, uh, oh. I don't actually remember what you call the book, but if you actually just um, Google Matthew Walker, um, he's absolutely brilliant. You'll get him on YouTube and you'll get him on uh, Dr. Rangan Chatterjee's um, podcast um, talking about this. So these are his words and his research has found this. Insufficient sleep is the key lifestyle factor determining whether or not you will develop Alzheimer's. Um, so you might say, okay, I came on here to listen about, uh, you know, the immune system and not uh, all this carry on, but I think that's worth knowing. So if we can get the sleep up a bit, oh, Liz has in. Sorry. So we can get the sleep sorted out, we can uh, strengthen the, uh, and support the immune system, and we can also reduce our chances of developing Alzheimer's. So who doesn't want that? Um, inadequate sleep, even for a week. Um, and this was a, a study that they did on, on people who, and they actually sleep deprived them for a week, um, disrupts the blood sugar so much that if they took a test after a week of inadequate sleep, you could be classified as pre-diabetic and short sleeping sets you on the path to uh, heart disease, stroke and heart failure and contributes to depression, anxiety and suicidality. That's uh, uh, why we sleep there. I can just see the, the, um, the name of his book now uh, in 2018. So this is all very recent research um, and looking at that there, what that's, uh, you know, what that, what's jumping out at me is 
that um, the short sleeping is contributing to the anxiety that we're already feeling. So, you know, we have a reason for being anxious at this time. If we're not sleeping well, it's heightening the anxiety. So anything that we can do to try to get better quality sleep, longer sleep and better quality sleep um, is going to be worth it to the immune system. So a wee bit of a, a, wee bit of a sleep action plan then. And really, you know, what, what you kind of want to be doing is making sleep something that you're proud of. Oh, I got eight hours sleep last night. Instead, it just to be, and I mean, I, whenever I worked in the private sector, um, you know, I was very proud of the fact that I could, I could be fine on, on five hours. Oh, I don't need much sleep. Oh, I'm great. You know, I'm a machine. I'm super duper. You know, I was, I was killing myself for goodness sake. Um, but um, so there's people coming in there late. I'm just adding them in. Um, so really, what you want to, you know, you want to be, you want to make sleep a heroic act. You want to kind of make it a, a real. And from from my perspective and my colleagues, you know, we want to make sleep kind of like a. Um, uh, like the, the sexy thing in healthcare, do you know what I mean? It's as important as getting the right nutrients and sometimes more important. Um, so you really want to be, you know, you know, digging deep into your into your thinking around, you know, where does where does where does sleep come in in the priority of your life? Now I know if you're a young mother there with children that don't sleep well and you know, your, your sleep is broken. You're probably, you know, going like, oh, for God's sake, shut up, talk about sleep. I would sleep if I could. Um, you know, but basically what I'm saying is sleep if you can. Sleep as much as you can. Um, anything more than 10 hours is not healthy. Um, but sleep as much as you can um, and when you can. And actually, it's the quality of the sleep that you're getting whenever you are asleep. So if you're on your phone, just before you go to bed um, and you get two hours sleep because the baby woke you up two hours later but those two hours are not going to be good quality sleep if you've put the phone down two hours before you go to bed and you get two hours sleep and you you know have some of this um that's on the screen there you know some of this uh nighttime routine um the two hours sleep that you do get will be better quality and will stand you better so there's always 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 improvements that you can make your sleep and I hope that you understand by now that there is so that th there's a reason there's a reason why we, we need this sleep okay so we need to be sleeping de deeply so get a, a nice if you can a regular early bedtime so what's early and everybody's routine is going to be all messed up now anyway so you've got to you know work the routine um that that, that you can um but you know for for a normal 95er type thing, you know, that's kind of uh, getting up at seven and um, uh, starting work at half eight or nine or, or whatever else, whether you're at home or out, um, or getting up with the kids at, at, at around that time, um, then your regular early bedtime probably would be around about, you know, half 10, 11 o'clock at the latest. But really what I would say is work back from your rising time. So whatever your normal rising time is, work back and try to get a minimum of seven hours. If you can get eight, but a minimum of seven hours. What you're looking at uh, um, in order to make sure that you've kind of got that good quality, and there's a lot of stuff around the circadian rhythm. Even whenever I was talking earlier about um, getting outside, um, I'm just realizing I haven't got it on this slide here, but one of the best things that you can do to get a good night's sleep is to expose yourself to daylight, proper daylight, not just through the window or through a glass. Open the door, sit outside the back door with a cup of, you know, your, your tea or whatever else and let the light at your, um, at your eyes. Um, and that basically sends a signal to your brain that your circadian clock is reset from then and starting to wind down. Okay, so that, that, that's a good wee tip there. Um, but basically, you know, around your nighttime routine, um, you want to be limiting your screen time. Uh, the, the blue light that comes from our tablets and our phones um, actually can cut the production of um, uh, melatonin, which is your sleep hormone. Well, melatonin does a lot more than, than the sleep hormone, but um, it, it helps to get you to sleep. 
So basically, it, it cuts it. If you were on the iPad for, say, an hour before bed, flicking through, you know, bits and bobs, um, it uh, actually reduces your uh, the amount of the sleep hormone that your body produces by 50%. Um, that's 5050, not 1550%. So half it. Okay, so that's going to half the quality of your sleep. You might end up, you know, getting six or seven hours sleep, but it's not going to be a great quality sleep. Um, avoiding food two hours before sleep, if at all possible. Now, that depends on, on you know, whether you um, suffer from blood sugar imbalances and, you know, there'd be different things that would come in there. Um, and, um, you know, you could. Uh, do you have a, a condition you'll you'll know that best or it's something if i was seeing a client one to one that i would be able to advise on but for, for 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 the normal general populace what we would be looking at is avoiding food two hours before sleep you want to give your digestive system a good rest you don't want to be going to bed and your digestive system instead of it's having a you know downtime and time to basically you know clear out and, and tidy up it's having to work overtime um uh steadily and again that may, you might sleep but you're not getting a good quality sleep um so the limit in the screen time is kind of the same no phone in the bedroom and um, a the temptation will be there to lift it i mean and i've done this i've put it on flight mode and everything and thought no i'll not and maybe just i'll take a wee quick flick uh, at it so i would suggest no phone in the bedroom um, if you need an alarm, see if you can get um, an alarm clock or set the phone so far away from you um, that you won't reach right for it. Turn down the temperature in the room so your, the temperature in your bedroom should be enough to kind of like if you take your dressing gown off, you're kind of, oh, that like this here. I think, I think it's something like 17, 18 degrees is actually what the, that it shouldn't be any, any warmer than that. If your bedroom is too warm, um, you might camp out with heat, but again, you're not getting a good quality sleep and you probably that will then uh, waken up. Um, and definitely have a good blackout. So have good good um, blackout curtains, um, uh, hopefully, and make sure that they're tightly closed, not a chink of light through, because it's, it's kind of the same as what the screen does. Um, uh, it, um, you know, light, brightness, um, What's this, was I, I heard somebody say something like, you know, in, in, in our day and age, we have a, a deficiency of, of darkness um, whenever, whenever it comes to uh, nighttime. Did I get that the right way around? I think I have that. Um, so you basically want to um, send all the messages to your body that this is sleepy time, this is sleepy time, this is sleepy time. A nice wee routine at night, uh, you know, that would also maybe, um, you know, start to calm you down a bit is either the start journaling um or a gratitude journal or just a wee write your thoughts down um in a wee book a couple of minutes meditation we're not talking about a full half hour or anything like that um or maybe just um you know some nice music um just just to relax you anything that gets you away from uh from the screen and if you think about it this kind of nighttime routine is really taking us back to childhood and what we do with our children and we know that um you know children sleep better behave better, react better um, whenever they've had a good night's sleep and whenever their routine is kept steady. So as much as possible, um, you know, just try to get yourself into a nice routine and prioritize sleep. Uh, I think that's the sleep one done. So let's see what we're on to now. Karen has entered in. A few people coming on late, so I'm just Popping off to let them in. Oh, and then me. There we go. So, at last, this year we're getting on to uh, nutrients. Um, and nutrients, uh, by definitely so important. I mean, if you think about all of those, um, whenever I was talking back about the, you know, the immune system and the cells, and you know, it's it basically, you know, you've got this army of all these different all these different cells all having something um, different to do whenever um, an infection or a bacteria or a virus um, comes on. And they're like different soldiers, you know, there's your, I don't know too much about um, soldiers. Um, maybe they watch, husband watches so many flipping war films, but anyway, you know, the infantry, the soldiers on horseback, the, 
the foot soldiers, the boys in the tank, all that, right? So if you think about your immune system as all these different um, uh, fighters um, uh, coming in, but basically, you know, they need, they need fed, and they need fed a good range of vitamins and minerals. These are just a few of the ones that I have picked out that are particularly important. Um, for your immune system, there are more. They're all, you know, they're all important. But these are the ones that are kind of like identified as being um, uh, super supportive for your immune system. Now, food is always best in terms of you getting these nutrients, but supplements can give you a bit of a boost. I have supplements kind of last and uh, on my list um, because supplements aren't going to help that much if you're not sleeping. Supplements aren't going to help that much if you're not, um, uh, you know, trying to manage your stress and trying to um, uh, reduce the impact of stress on your body. Supplements will help a bit if your food, if your dietary intake is not great. So if for any reason, say for example, you know, you follow a particular dietary protocol that would mean that you might be low in, you know, a particular vitamin, then supplements will help with that. Um, uh, or just generally, you know, that you think that your diet's not great until you get your, your diet up to, to speed, then supplements can definitely help. But my diet is pretty good and I do take regularly um, supplements. I take like vitamin C, I take vitamin D3, I take zinc, zinc and selenium together and the omega-3 fatty acids. But I also get a lot of those from, from my diet. So I um, didn't mean to start talking about supplements so early. Let's talk about food. Let's uh, one of my favorite things. Um, so I'm going to go through, um, maybe not all of these, but as many of them as I have time um, to uh, get through just in a wee bit more detail as to why they're so important for the immune system and which foods you can get them from. So your antioxidants. Now, a high antioxidant intake has been shown to improve immune response and activate certain immune cells. So this is fact borne out by loads and loads of studies and research, okay? So antioxidants are basically, um, I have some notes down here if you bear with me a wee second. Um, so the, uh, the clue is in the name with the antioxidants, right? Um, they, they fight oxidative stress um, in the body. Now, it, it comes back to the whole inflammation. Um, thing that I talked about earlier. So a diet high in antioxidants will reduce levels of inflammation and protect cells from damage. So if we're all running around stressed um, and uh, not sleeping great, um, we're going to have high levels of inflammation. That's, you know, that, that's just us um, with uh, not having an inflammatory disease. So say, say, for example, somebody is out there with rheumatoid arthritis, um, you know, multiple sclerosis or any, any inflammatory condition, um, then they are going to have higher levels of what's called oxidative stress to your cells. So your antioxidant is helping to uh, counter that. So where do you get your antioxidants from? Basically your fruits and vegetables. Um, and what we're talking about here is your colorful fruits and vegetables. So you're looking for loads and loads and loads of color in your diet um, and basically follow the rainbow uh, to find your antioxidants pot of gold. Um, and again, um, sometimes that takes a wee bit of um, deliberation. So you kind of have to really think about, okay, how many different colored fruits and vegetables did I eat uh, today? And even if it's frozen fruits and vegetables, you know, you can have a bag of frozen peppers in the, in the fridge. That's three different colors that you're getting in there. Frozen vegetables are um, uh, normally frozen at source. So a lot of the vitamins and the minerals are all retained um, and have had no time to, um, uh, to dissipate um, or, you know, on the journey because they're usually frozen quite quickly, quite soon after, after picking. Um, so don't, don't be afraid to have plenty of frozen vegetables in your uh, in your freezer. Um, so this is just a wee chart. So that every, I don't do this all the time, but just every so often I will take a wee track of the different colours um, that I am eating. It used to be actually the, the purple. I used to struggle a bit with the purple. So um, 
if I'm if I'm tracking this, then um, uh, I see maybe that I'm struggling a bit with kind of like the purple and I think, oh gosh, I must go and buy an aubergine. Um, and it just reminds me to, to get the bit of uh, to get the bit of variety in. Um, and uh, this is a slightly childish looking one, shall I say? Uh, there's there's lots of lots of other uh, types that you can get. But for any of us that have uh, children or grandchildren around the house, you know, you can use this as a as a bit of fun as well. You know, maybe we get them to eat that uh, purple fruit or vegetable just to get that final uh, final tick um, on the day. If anybody wants a copy of this we um, this we chart, um, just uh, just let me know. Okay, so. Um, vitamin C, goodness gracious, was there ever a vitamin that was ever more talked about? And probably especially now. And you know what? It is a wee bit of a miracle vitamin. It definitely is. Um, I've been taking vitamin C now for a couple of years. And um, uh, I definitely think that it has helped to support my immune system because I rarely, rarely get colds. Um, and the last time I got a cold, um, which was this year, uh, was because I haven't been taking vitamin C for ages. Well, that's what I'm saying anyway. Um, so um, most, most of our immune cells and um, uh, a lot of the immune processes all rely on vitamin C to carry out their functions. So they're destroying toxins. If you think of the, you know, the, the war and the battle on soldiers, they're destroying toxins, increasing inflammation, and they're fighting against viruses and bacteria. That's what your immune cells are doing, okay? Vitamin C also, ups the levels of interferon, which is an antibody that kind of wraps around the cells like a cape and it prevents viruses uh, from entering. Now, vitamin C is one of the water-soluble vitamins, so it's very readily excreted in our urine. That means it can't be produced or stored by the body, so you take it in, you pee it out, you take it in, you pee it out, you take it in, you pee it out. Um, so it's very important to top it up every day and throughout the day. Um, and we are actually very lucky that many of the foods that we're taking in, if we're eating a healthy diet, um, are chock a block full of vitamin C. So deficiency in vitamin C is very rare. Um, but we're not just looking here to make sure that we're not deficient in something. We want optimum health. And so we want to be making sure that we're uh, that we're that we're topping up um, with our vitamin C in our foods. So, and, and an interesting point around vitamin C, the glucose from sugars, um, uh, you know, that's your refined sugars, your pastries, your cakes, your chocolates, as well as just any sugar that you're putting on anything, and your high carbohydrate foods. So the glucose from those sugars and high carbohydrate foods actually compete with the pathway in the body that vitamin C uses. So there's a competition going on there if you're eating sugar. And you know the vitamin C, so they're having a competition, so it competes with it. But that means if you're eating a lot of sugary stuff and high carbohydrate foods, then you are um, it's more difficult for you to utilize the vitamin C. Um somebody else calling the meeting at this time, I don't think. So let me just check. No. Uh, so where are you going to find your vitamin C? You'll find it in loads of foods. Um, uh, vitamin C is found in, in, in a lot of foods, not just these ones that I have um, down here at the bottom. Citrus foods, so loads of citrus foods, fruits, so your, you know, your lemons and your oranges. Um, funnily enough, um, kiwi, I think, has more vitamin C than in, uh, than in lemons. Um, I did that in research for something. I can't remember now what it was, but green peppers, strawberries, pineapple, you know, all good sources. So, you know, a lot of that, if you're eating the rainbow, you're getting your vitamin C. Vitamin C is an antioxidant as well. So it's helping to fight, fight that inflammation. Um, so all those nice um, colorful fruits and vegetables, vast majority of them will have um, some vitamin C and, you know, these ones will have the, the highest forms of it. So it, it is really important. I mean, they're looking at vitamin C, you know, there's all sorts of stuff. Well, it's hard to know what's coming out of China, but definitely it looks like as if they're having a lot of success with very high doses of vitamin C. Um, 
you have to fight this actual virus. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go out and take high doses of vitamin C, definitely not, but it is just to let you know that it is an important, um, very important vitamin um, for our immune system. Vitamin D3, also very important. So vitamin D3, um, and you know, there, there's vitamin D, but like there's, all, there's loads of vitamin Ds, right? So vitamin D3 is, is one of the most important ones. It comes from animals and vitamin D2 comes from plants, right? So the main, where we're getting the, the vitamin D uh, from is from sunshine. It not only helps the body produce vitamin D, but it also helps to regulate our circadian rhythm. So that's the, the sunshine. Um, so any time that you can get out in the light at all, in the sunlight, get out. Um, so there on, what day was it? Was it yesterday? It was a gorgeous, beautiful, bright day. Um, so anybody that could get out and expose themselves to the uh, sunshine helps regulate the circadian rhythm, but it helps our body produce the vitamin D. Um, sunshine also helps to calm the nervous system, which helps keep the immune system strong. Um, I think that there's widespread recognition that we in Ireland anyway should be supplementing with vitamin D3 in, uh, in winter. We're coming out the other end of winter now, but if you have any vitamin D, vitamin D3 lying about the house that you bought and you weren't taking, you know, take it. Um, you will find uh, vitamin D in sunshine, in salmon and sardines, in uh, mushrooms, in egg yolk and in fortified cereal. So you'll often see sometimes in the cereals fortified with and it will be fortified with vitamin D because there is the recognition that we're not getting a lot of vitamin, uh, vitamin D. It is very, um, you know, it's kind of the opposite with the vitamin C. It is actually very easy for us to be deficient in vitamin, uh, vitamin D. Very easily tested. I'm not sure how easily it will be at this time, um, but um, it is normally very, uh, very easily and quite easily. Um, and then um, another uh, couple of um, minerals, so zinc and selenium. Now, zinc and selenium are kind of, they, they go together a fair bit. Um, wherever you need zinc, you need selenium um, almost. Um, both very important for the, for the immune system. Low zinc bioavailability in the body um, will result in a limited immunoresistance infection. So you want to be making sure that you have plenty of zinc in your diet. The highest um, sources are, you can see there, from shellfish, oysters, crab, and lobster, and beef. Um, somebody had asked me earlier um, about uh, if they were following a plant-based diet, what effect could that have on their immune system? So you can see here that the, that the top sources of zinc, um, you know, you wouldn't be getting them if you're on a, on a, on a plant-based diet. Um, but, uh, I think it's one of those things, if you're on a plant-based diet, you're on a plant-based diet for, for a reason, it's either ethical or moral or for your health, but you know, or whatever. So it's just a matter of you making yourself aware of where else you're going to get the best from. Um, so you can see there from nuts, almonds and cashews in particular, you're getting uh, your fortified cereal, cereals, often fortified with zinc, um, and your uh, legumes. Um, your uh, selenium then, needed for the proper functioning of all of the immune cells and systems. So the highest source of selenium, um, uh, great here for uh, vegetarians or vegans, is in Brazil nuts. So if you had three Brazil nuts every day, you would get the recommended daily, um, uh, recommended, daily recommended amount, the daily amount for selenium. Um, no, we want more than the recommended daily amount. We want the opt want it for optimum health because the recommended uh, daily uh, amounts that are recommended by government are really there just to prevent us from getting sick. And we do want to not get sick, of course, but we want to be living our optimum life. We want to be the healthiest version um, of ourselves that we can be. Um, you know, and thinking ahead, um, you know, one of my reasons for, for getting into nutritional therapy was that um, whenever I am older, I want to be really, really fit and healthy when I'm older. And this whole virus, this pandemic that has hit, has reinforced that in me. I don't want to be, if I can at all help it, and I can through, through um, you know, better food and lifestyle choices, 
um, to be uh, as vulnerable as, as some people um, are. And, you know, some things are beyond our control, but the things that we can control, we must try to control. Um, so Brazil nuts, fantastic. Halibut, oysters, and you see oysters there, if you like your oysters, and if you can afford your oysters, I don't like them, probably couldn't afford them either. Um, the zinc and selenium, really, really, really high there. Um, your brown rice, lobster, ooh, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, shouldn't be bringing out my personal preferences here. And uh, uh, eggs and bread, so a lot of bread. Um, but not, not, you can, you'll get selenium in, in some bread. Okay, selenium is, it comes from the soil. Um, so it kind of depends on where all this stuff is coming from. Um, if it's coming from a uh, soil that is rich in selenium, then your product will, that you're eating will be, um, you know, rich in selenium. So I suppose it's one of those things kind of just for that reason. Um, and, you know, there's a whole lot of, um, there's a big rationale around that our soil is all depleted now that we might have to supplement with, uh, with, with zinc and um, uh, selenium there as well. So it's just something, something to be aware of. And then we talked about inflammation um, earlier. Oh, uh, I'm going about an hour now, so I shouldn't be too much longer if everybody can um, hold on with me. Um, so we talked about inflammation. And uh, yes, we need some inflammation, but we can't have too much inflammation. And most of the time with our stressful lives, with us not sleeping great, with us eating inflammatory foods a lot of the time, um, we need to be um, countering that with anti-inflammatory foods where we can. All of those fruits and vegetables, all those antioxidants that we were talking about, those are all anti-inflammatory foods. Um, so, uh, these were just a couple of other ones that are pretty well known um, anti-inflammatories um, that are very easily added into your um, into your meals. So your garlic, your ginger, your turmeric, and cinnamon. Um, if at all possible, you know, go for the uh, for the for the root for the fresh root that you can. And just you know, grate, chop, or um, squeeze it into pretty much everything. So this is your ginger root, your garlic, and your turmeric. If you can't get them fresh, then just go with the best quality um, ground that you can, um, and cinnamon. And this is just a wee plug for a, for a great wee shop that's opened up there out in Eglinton for anybody that's handy. And as far as I know, they're staying open for, for as long as they can. Um, it's called Ethical Way, and they have um, all uh, organic um, dried ground uh, herbs and spices. Um, but I use a lot of cinnamon. Um, I love the taste of it. I use it as a sweetener as well. Um, but I was absolutely de delighted to be able to get a quite cheap um, uh, an organic cinnamon um, out there. So, and they have the, the uh, turmeric as well. So adding those into um, as many recipes as you can. I do have a recipe sheet and a fact sheet that I'll be emailing out for everybody. And you'll see the garlic and the ginger and the turmeric um, and the cinnamon in a lot of the recipes for you as well. So basically, just to summarize what you're looking to do for your immune system to give it a good, good boost um, is to um, include plenty of fresh veg and fruit. Your oily fish, which I didn't talk about, that was on the list there, but that's you're getting your omega-3 fats there. The immune system needs it, the brain needs it, every, everything needs your omega-3 fats. Um, your uh, fresh veg and fruit, your oily fish, your salmon, sardines, and mackerel. Um, and if you are a vegetarian or vegan and you're not eating um, fish, then you just need to be aware of making sure that you're getting your omega-3 from, um, you know, algae or seaweed or, you know, wherever, wherever else that you're, that you're going to get it. But you definitely need to be get, getting plenty of it. Um, your nuts and your seeds, your lean meat and poultry, your healthy fats, your whole grains and your um, herbs and spices. And I should have had my legumes and um, all your beans and everything in there. I haven't got them, but definitely those because they're a great source of protein. Um, just as importantly, and although I, I, do, I don't normally like to focus on what I want you to avoid and take out, but uh, more what, what you want to include and kind of almost push that other stuff off the edge, um, is your processed foods. Your refined carbohydrates, things like sweets, cakes and biscuits, and sugary products, fried foods, takeaways, 
alcohol and fizzy drinks and unhealthy fats. So what you're looking to do there is just reduce them as much as you can, not completely, you know, or well, if you can completely take them out of your diet, but um, you know, they're they're part of life and, and sometimes, you know, you, you find an occasion to have a nice wee bit of cake or a wee scone or something like that. But as much as possible, you're gonna be um, including all of the ones on the left hand side. Um, if that's the side that it comes up from you, anyway, you know, the one that starts with a fresh veg and fruit. So your plan then, so you were you had a, a few ideas there for your um for your your stress management, a few ideas for um a, a bit of a, a sleep plan, a sleep protocol that you could make up for yourself. Um and uh this is a, a sample uh nutrition action uh step that um, a colleague of mine shared uh, with me because she had a, a client and was working on the immune system. Thank you, Maeve. And um, so this was a sample um, action step she had agreed with this client. So the client was going to go away and eat at least five of these foods a day. Um, now, there's plenty of other foods that could have been on that list, but this was specific for this client. So for example, this client didn't like ginger. So there's no point in putting it in the list and saying, you know, you have to eat ginger. Um, so she's going to eat the garlic and the turmeric and, you know, the, the rest of it. So you could head off now and make out your own sample nutrition action that you're going to aim to do. You know, set yourself a target, set yourself a goal, you know, something that's uh, measurable, something that's achievable for you. It might not be achievable for you to eat, you know, five anti-inflammatory immune boosting foods. Maybe it's three for you, but... Uh, you know, whatever it is, challenge yourself and set yourself down that goal that you can um, uh, that you can achieve. So that, let's say, that's just a sample one. Um, and then we we would talk. I'm not going to talk too much about um, activity, but it is important. Daily exercise can relieve stress. It can increase the circulation of the lymph system, and it assists in the elimination of toxins including viruses and bacteria. If your elimination is not good, um, then um, uh, you know, the toxins and the bacteria and the viruses will still all be um, floating, uh, floating around and not getting away quickly enough. Uh, so exercise can help with that. Exercise can either destroy your ability to fight an infection or it can destroy the infection. So what you're looking at here is exercise when I say but not too much, I meant you know exercise the, the right sort of exercise for your body, and um, uh, you know it's it's good to know that if you're not feeling great, um, whether it's because mentally you're not feeling great or sh or physically something you know is not great, that the risk of suppressing the immune system goes up the harder you train. So it's a bit of a kind of just getting the balance for you. For me, I'm a big walker and. Um, you know, some days I'll walk hard and some days I'll walk easy. It just depends. And again, your yoga is good. But if you're stressed, if you're already suffering from some sort of a condition that, you know, that, um, that your immune system might be under a wee bit of uh, threat anyway, then I would be toning down the, uh, the activity. That is a great um, uh, video there. Um, if you just come up on Facebook, Dr. Ben Lynch on Facebook, um, he had a great wee video um, that had a brilliant explanation of the getting the right activity to suit, um, to suit you. And then I have talked about supplements earlier, so I'll probably not have to spend too long on that now. Um, but, you know, lowering your stress response is more important than taking supplements, in my opinion, at this time. Eating healthily is more important and sleeping well and prioritizing that is more important so you know you don't have to rush out and you know buy loads of supplements and send away for this that and the other you know start with the stress response start with the sleep and the healthier eating you know make the changes there where, where you can um but a couple of supplements um and i i don't normally rec well recommend specific supplements unless I am actually seeing a client and have spent some time with them because there's so many you know you might be on other medication and different things in your life would mean that one supplement would be better than another things like that but as a general rule of thumb you know a vitamin c powder or a capsule um, of a good quality I take around about a thousand milligrams a day um, 
that your vitamin D3 wouldn't go in the amounts of that unless it was uh, chatting to you. A good multivitamin um, uh, is, is, is always going to benefit. Um, and, you know, there are a couple of good brands around there. And um, that's, would you believe it? That's my Fitbit is going now because my hand has been going. I've been sitting here for an hour and it has just buzzed. Um, you know, a good multivitamin and a good um, an omega-3 with, uh, you know, with decent levels of EPA and, and BHA, which are good for the brain, good, uh, good for the um, immune system as well. So I think that's pretty much everything. I am going to maybe unmute you now in a wee minute and see if anybody has any questions or if you don't feel like asking the questions um, on, the, um, on the webinar here, you can feel free to um, email me. But really, so what, what now, if you do have any questions, get in touch. I mean, I want to help people as much as, as I can. Um, with anything that I can help that, that, that's general, once it gets into something more specific, I probably would need the uh, would need to see you um, via Zoom. Uh, so, um, any questions? You can email, text, uh, private message me, DM me, whatever whatever you use, or just left the phone and ring me, uh, WhatsApp. Um, I'm going to send you out uh, an immune system fact sheet and a recipe sheet, and um, I'll also just add on the uh, what was it? Oh, the rainbow chart as well. It would be great if um, if you do follow me on any of my social media feeds, if you could like and maybe comment, um, even just a wee comment on any of my posts, because that helps Facebook to know that um, what I'm putting up is of interest to people, and then they start to prioritize it a bit more. So a simple like doesn't normally do that. If you can comment, that would be great. I'm on Instagram, and Facebook would be my main Instagram and Facebook. I'm also on Twitter and LinkedIn, um, just not as, not as active. We have a wee group, a uh, private group, Janice's VIP group on Facebook. Um, it's been a bit quiet of late, but if you would like to join that, um, I will be doing some more Facebook lives and they'll probably be done in the, in the group. So, you know, just kind of keep me um, up to date. This is just a wee list of ways that you can work with me. Um, uh, I do offer one-to-one -one personalized nutritional therapy on specific health issues. Um, I do small group work. Um, if there's a small group of people that have a shared health goal, it could be sleep, it could be weight loss, um, anything like that, then um, you know, I'm currently seeing a, a weight loss group and uh, there's um, uh, four, four people and we just, we've just uh, moved from doing it in person and on the Zoom and that has worked very well. And then I will be doing more webinars like this um, for the general public on um, health um, and uh, likely some of them will, will have a will have a fee. And that's my email address, uh, Janice at JaniceTracyNutrition.com. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, I suppose you had to be attentive and you couldn't interrupt because you were all muted. But let's see now I shall um, unmute you. Can you unmute yourself, I wonder? Maybe not. Let's check. Yeah, you yeah, can. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. If you can unmute yourself, then um, if anybody has any questions, um, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question. And if anybody has. Oh. Janice, that was really informative. Thank you. Oh, is that Barbara? Yes. It is indeed. It was really good. Hi, nice your voice. Thank really you, interesting. Yeah. Good, good. Okay. Um, and I didn't go on. As, uh, normally, I, um, well, yeah, I'm about 15, 15 minutes late. That's not too bad. I got through it all rightly. <laughs> uh, let me see. Um, I'm going to try and stop recording my action. Thanks very much, Janice. See you soon. Okay. All right, thank you. Right. Say thank you. Hi, Hi Thank you. Yes.